Ever wondered how you can make abstract paintings out of almost any stimuli? I'm going to show you my approach in today's video. Once you've created your pieces of art, they can be used for your art journal, they can be used for pockets and tags and belly bands uh, and journaling cards in your junk journal. You can really put them to any use that you choose. You could make cards out of them, whatever you'd like to do. Today, I'm going to be working with my watercolours, but you could use any paint you choose. This is just because I got some watercolours last year as a gift for completing my one of my novels. And I got some watercolour paper for Christmas and I haven't used any yet. So this is me going into my stash, finding what's there and, and choosing to work with that just as you can. So if you've got acrylic paint, great. If you've got powder paint, great. If you've got old lipstick and, uh, you know, old eyeshadow, give those a go. You don't actually have to have anything professional. You can just use any mark making tool in the colours of your choice. So to start with, uh, I'm going to just show you a photograph that I'm working from that is of the Statue of Liberty. As you can see, there's quite a lot going on in that photograph in terms of the fact that we can see almost the whole statue. As an abstract artist, what I need to do is break down the shapes and the colours. So I'm going to start with the most obvious shape, for me anyway, which is the sort of triangles in the crown. And I'm just getting my paintbrush dipped into this sort of turquoisey colour that I think is closest that I've got to the Statue of Liberty's colour. And as soon as I've got that and I'm using a sort of thin brush, I'm just going to start getting some paint on the paper. So I've done that and as you can see it's not even straight, <laughs> you know doing things straight is not my strength but I'm not going to stress about that I'm just going to move on to the next thing and see keep seeing how it pans out. The next thing I want to take inspiration from is the torch which has a sort of flame coming out of it so I'm going to get my orange paint and I'm going to just start building a well in my watercolour and getting my brush kind of where I want it to be in terms of how loaded it is. I'm going to switch brushes at this point and then again start creating some shapes. The third thing that I'm going to take inspiration from is the sky around the Statue of Liberty which is a slightly darker blue. And I do like to have three things in this kind of project. So there's like a sequence of shapes and colours. So on the surface, that looks quite basic. And to be fair, it is. But what I'm going to do is just repeat the pattern once more till I get to the bottom of the page. And then I'll show you what I might do with this kind of design. So I've got my pattern now and I think we can all agree I'm not a master artist. I have just taken some shapes, very basic shapes, haven't actually been that straight or accurate with them. I know it's not perfect but it is unique. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this a few minutes to dry and then I'm going to talk about what you can do with a piece of work like this. You might be a much more skilled artist than me and I can talk to you about what you could do with it but if you are a junk journal like me and you're actually not too worried about perfection and you're just interested in expression I can also explain about what you might do with it in that circumstance. So let's let it dry and I'll be back shortly. Okay, as usual, it looks slightly better dry, I think. Obviously still the work of an amateur, but that's okay. I am an amateur, and I'm just hoping that as I practice with the watercolours and the paints, um, I'll get better at creating marks on the page. 
I can even see that some of it has bled into itself and I'm okay with that too. I quite like it in fact. Again, I just think it adds to it. With this blue um, streak here, I did think it could both be the sky and the Hudson River uh, and the East River who, that flow through New York. So I like how that can be interpreted in lots of different ways. And of course, you know, we can all agree that this isn't exactly, you know, a masterpiece of art. But uh, it is an interesting kind of set of shapes and colours next to each other. Conceptually, each shape and colour complements each other. Because I've taken it from a particular image and I've used that image as a concept for a work of art. Now, if you are a much better artist than me, you can create something much more polished than this and you can frame it and you can literally call it the Statue of Liberty. And there is your abstract piece of art. That is it. You've done it. Uh, if you're a junk journal like me and you actually want to create something with your art, be it journaling cards or whatever, obviously it's just a matter of chopping up and backing it however you want to use it. In this case, I am going to create a floating pocket and what's going to happen is what usually happens when I fold or cut things up. Uh, it's going to bring into focus some of the marks that I've made on the page but it's also going to mask some of the less perfect elements. For example, the fact that it's not painted in a straight line. <laughs> so I like folding and cutting for that reason because <laughs> it hides a lot of the imperfections. So uh, all I've done then is folded the piece of paper into itself to kind of create a tube and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold up from the bottom and then fold down from the top and already hopefully you can see this is looking quite like quite an interesting floating pocket and I'm just going to open it up and then what I'm going to do is take my scissors and I'm going to cut slight angle at this side and then trim that off at the fold. I'm going to trim at a slight angle at this side and then trim that off at the fold. So that has created our sort of bottom flap of the envelope when it's all glued together. And I'm then just going to repeat the process with, with the top but it's going to be a slightly bigger flap because it's the top flap. So cutting along and then cutting up at a slight angle. Cutting at a slight angle and then cutting along the fold. Before I go any further, well, first of all, look how skew if I've cut that. That needs a little bit of work. I do find it tricky sometimes cutting straight, as I've said on many a video. I just hope that it gives you a bit of solace if you're also one of those people for whom cutting in a straight line is almost impossible. Uh, so that's that. What I am going to do there before I get it all glued together is I'm just going to take some uh, ink it's not distress ink or anything it's just plain blue ink and I'm going to just work my way around the edge of the envelope in blue a darker blue than the ones we see in the painting itself Okay, that's a slightly grungier effect, but I do like it. It also just blocks out some of the white that was happening along the bottom. And I'm going to do the same across the top fold, just grunge it up a bit. There we go. So all that remains is to glue this together, which I will now do with my glue stick. Okay, because I've made this out of uh, watercolour paper, it's extremely sturdy. 
Okay, a very sturdy pocket. Uh, you could use it as a plain envelope. Don't even have to use it in a junk journal, it's so sturdy. So we've got that. But the last thing I'd like to do is just do a little closure. So I'm just gonna pop an eyelet through here and some string to finish it off. Okay, took a little bit of negotiation with the closure there. I didn't cut quite enough thread the first time, but it is now uh, all sorted. And I think really as far as, you know, amateur paintings go, this is a pretty cool pocket to have ended up with. I know it's not going to win any awards for, you know, fine art, but to me, it's something unique that I've made. It didn't take me too long. Uh, it is very unique and imperfect, but I quite like that. And, you know, I'm happy with the end result. I think this is something that I'd be proud to put in my junk journal as a sort of starting point for my work with watercolours. and as a sort of benchmark that I can see, you know, where I'm going wrong with my mark making and, and later I can look back and think, gosh, you know, look how far I've come since I made that pocket. The main thing that I wanted you to take away from this video really is my approach to abstract art, which I think quite a few abstract artists use. You take the colours, you take the shapes, and then you create a pattern on the paper and you either uh, create a piece of art and you frame it and you label it after your inspiration or you never tell anyone what inspired you in the first place and you just create these abstract shapes for your junk journal or your art journal uh, just for your own pleasure and expression. Uh, I hope this has been an interesting and useful video for you and I hope you have a go at doing this for yourself with a photograph or with something that you're looking at in still life. I look forward to working with you again next time. Thank you for all the positivity around this channel, the subscribes, the likes, the comments. It really does make me feel like part of a community. And right now I can tell you there's no real better feeling than that. Take care. See you next time.